971. All right. So today is an anniversary of sorts. Very exciting. Five years ago today, in my opinion, the worst trade in NBA history went down. But maybe the worst trade in sports history. Maybe. You have any idea what I'm talking about? I'd ask David, but he's not here. Would we lose him to stall two? What happened? Wow, in 2013? Um, uh, five years, David, here you go. Welcome back. Five years ago today, one of the worst trades in the history of sports went down. Do you know the trade I'm referring to? And then I'll explain how this is relevant to the people. No clue? No, I can't, I can't think of what trade you're referring to, no. Five years ago today, the Boston Celtics sent Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Jason Terry to the Nets for Gerald Wallace, Chris Humphreys, Marshawn Brooks, Chris Joseph, and three unprotected first-round picks. That is, honest to God, it ended up being one of the worst trades in history as the Celtics ended up with Jason Tatum and and uh, numbnuts, Jalen Brown, and all this draft capital, right? The ability to go get Kyrie Irving with one of those Nets picks, right? What is the worst trade in our city? Look, I only got here in Detroit specifically in 0304. I've been in the state since 98. But I know as a Celtics fan, we will never make a better trade than that. We just won't. The Nets handed us the ability to rebuild because what we traded them tanked. They ended up being absolute garbage juice, and they handed us three, well, two top three picks. The first pick in the draft, the third pick in the draft, and then we ended up trading the eighth pick in the draft. For all old, expensive players, we ended up with a bunch of expiring contracts, which created room that ended up being someone like Al Horford, which ended up being someone like Kyrie Irving. What trade in Detroit history would compare to that? Now, just think about it for a second. It can't just be, oh, Doyle Alexander for John Small. We're talking about a deal. That transformed a franchise. It has to be something that absolutely was either incredibly impactful for the good or for the bad for the entire franchise. Does anything amount to it? June 27th, 2013. The Nets handed the Celtics 10 years of being good and cut their rebuild down to about three years? Or do you think I'm full of crap and I'm overstating it? That's fine, too. 248-539-9797. Mike, you going to stare at your microphone or are you going to say something to it? I can't tell. No, I'm just trying to think. He looked, I, I mean, Roberto, he mind. looked transfixed. He was, just, he was just staring at it. Smoke's coming out of his ears. Right. <laughs> well, I, and I know some people are already texting it. Blake Griffin trades the worst. I wouldn't label that the worst. But it was bad. Uh, but you could, well, hold on. You could argue the Blake Griffin deal will become the worst if that first round pick they gave up ends up becoming something great while Griffin just, I mean, you know what Griffin's going to do to you. He's going to lock your, he's going to lock you up for four years. You can do nothing. His money is just gross. The one that comes to mind for me is, one that perhaps might not have the impact that that one did for future picks, but it's a trade that I really think destroyed the Pistons as we as we knew them was Iverson for Chauncey. I think once that trade was made, the Pistons went into this misery of just not being any good. They the, haven't been since then. But the assets exchanged were not grossly disproportionate. Which I can't disagree with. I'm just thinking of a trade that that was so bad that it kind of dismantled the team. I don't think the Pistons have been the same since that trade. I mean, the trade for the good that comes to mind to me is Rashid. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, what was it? Zelico, Rabracha, Mike James, who you ended up getting back. I mean, who else? 
and you got one of the top three or four power forwards in basketball to add to your starting five. It's one of the great trades in the history of the city. The only uh, snowball effect, I'd say, for the Chauncey and Iverson trade was that the Pistons did clear some cap space, and then they used that space on, I believe, Ben Gordon and Charlie Villanueva, which were just two or t- <laughs> were just terrible contracts. So the residual mm. from that, the residual wasn't draft picks, no. no. But what it was was them using that extra money and, and signing two contracts that just haunted this team. Well, that's when they should have they should have fired Dumars before letting him spend the money. Yeah. That's the problem. They never did. But I, I just, I wondered, five years ago today, that trade goes down at forever. I mean, look, it changed the NBA. It gave the Celtics outs. It gave the Celtics the ability to have this draft capital where Danny Ainge could then make moves, clear salary, and have lottery picks besides his own. I don't know. It just it was one of those things that just popped in my head. I'll give you an outside the box one. You went outside the box earlier. Outside the box trade that I think will haunt this team is a more recent trade. We actually talked about this name before the show. Mm-hmm. A. Eugenio Suarez for Alfredo Simon. Yikes. Suarez looks really, really good. He does. Alfredo Simon didn't do anything here. And when you look at it, with of course it's still early, but A. Eugenio Suarez, Suarez looks like a really good player. That's a trade, a recent one, that I think will haunt the Tigers. Certainly not on the scale of this, but yes, Mike. I mean, that's an everyday player. Uh, pull up pull up Suarez. Give me his OPS. He's got to be north of 850. He's hitting for some power. He plays a corner position. I mean, I... Maybe 850 is a little lofty, but he's got he's had a good year. OPS is uh, 967. Oh, my God. Nine. See, that's elite. He's been great. And, and that's, a, that's a trade. I said that... at least 850. I just insulted the kid. Now, they play in a toy ballpark in Cincy. I get that. Even if you cut him off at 900, that's elite OPS. I mean, that's a big-time player. Yeah, and he's, he's 26 years old. Is it to the level that we're talking about? No, but no. I just think it's a recent one that really was a lopsided one that's going to be even worse as the years go on. And, and you know what? Maybe it's a lousy job by me with the topic because maybe nothing compares to this Nets Celtics deal. I am talking about one of the deals I think is, look, it's one of the worst deals in history. I mean, it's, it's every bit as bad as the Herschel Walker deal. Every bit. That Herschel Walker trade gave Dallas the draft capital to build a monolith. That's where I don't think one-for-one deals make sense to be in this discussion. But mull it over. Maybe we do have something that compares. But five years ago today, it's crazy. And, yes, we'll get to more NBA stuff on Friday. LeBron will opt out. We'll we'll, we'll have a little fun with it. But this was just kind of one of those deals. 248-539-9797. Listen, if you need a part but you can't get to the store, 